Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining the talk today. My name is Lee Boon King. I'm the director of the Center of Excellence in International Trading uh, in Nanyang Technological University. Today, we're very happy to have uh, Chen Yu with us. Uh, she's, she's the uh, class of 2021 to kind of share his personal experience or personal journey uh, through this program. So um, you see on your screen, there is a QR code that you can scan to join this evening's uh, event, uh, which essentially is uh, held by our international trading club. So there's a very lively uh, community in, in NTU right now that basically talks about commodity trading, international trading, and uh, they organize a lot of events. And tonight, of course, we're going to have an event that you can kind of join and find out more about uh, this uh, club as well as you know the program. So scan and join today. All right, so I'm going to just basically talk about what CEIT, the Center of Excellence in International Trading, does. Uh, and then I'm just going to jump into the undergraduate program we have here, which is called the International Trading Program. It's a specialization uh, that essentially uh, trains our students so that they are somewhat more desk ready when they join the uh, uh, international trading uh, uh, sector in the, in the economy. So let me just talk a little bit about the center first. Uh, the center was formed maybe about eight years ago uh, with the help of Enterprise Singapore and I would say eight corporate partners. Uh, but more importantly, uh, it also involves uh, pretty much a large part of the NTU community because we actually have students coming from the Nanyang Business School as well as the College of Engineering. So as you know, the College of Engineering has several schools in there, including electrical engineering, computer science, uh, chemical engineering, etc. Uh, and within the civil engineering uh, community, we also have a group of people who specialize in maritime studies, right? So we actually have students coming from the College of Engineering, Maritime Studies, as well as Nanyang Business School. So that was how it started. We have only got eight corporate partners at that time. And if you look at um, what the objective of, or the original objective, which is still pretty much what it is right now, is to actually create the talent pipeline right, for the commodity trading uh, industry. So as you know, uh, Singapore is a very, very uh, busy port. It's a, I would say, probably Asia's, one of the uh, largest trading centers uh, in Asia, if not the largest. A and so the ecosystem right, is fairly deep and fairly wide. Right? As such, right, the, the talent requirement Right, to join this uh, industry is, um, is large. So uh, ESG Enterprise Singapore came and talked to us and said that, look, you know, um, the kind of feedback from the industry was that they need uh, more diversity in terms of what kind of talent right, is available uh, for them to hire. And they felt that, that you know, including the engineering people, the maritime people, into this uh, highly interdisciplinary uh, program, right, will will really provide the width and the depth, all right, for for the industry, and so that remains the objective. Of course, uh, one of the other objectives of uh, CIT essentially is to build a very very strong link between the university and the industry, all right, and that link, of course, allow us to do several things. Right. One of them is to bring what I call the industry into the classroom. Right. So if you if you think about it, right, one of the things that we want to do in our efforts to make the course such that students are more desk ready to, is to make it a lot more practical. Later, Chen Yu can actually share with you, right, his experience when he go through the program. And and the other one uh, really is to um, ensure that we have that pipeline of internships 
right, to provide the work experience, right, for our students so that, you know, they are kind of well prepared for the workforce. Uh, last but not least is the fact that we also bring the classroom into the industry. How do we do that? By offering students what we call experiential uh, learning trips, all right? So before the pandemic, of course, uh, this was done uh, uh, much, much more. Uh, and due to the pandemic, we're kind of quieting it down. But we're kind of trying to build it up. Right? So later, I'll share with you some of the experiential trips that students uh, uh, make in order to have uh, kind of a real life experience in terms of how some of these commodities uh, companies are operating, right? So I think this uh, makes the program, all right, extremely uh, realistic, extremely uh, meaningful, and creates a place for our students to jump into the workforce, you know, uh, quite well prepared. Okay, so from the beginning of eight corporate partners, Right, right now, we've expanded to about, I would say, 43 corporate partners. And that relationship has continued to kind of grow. So given this huge network, right, uh, we hope that there will be uh, more touch points between right, our students and companies uh, that can offer various types of uh, services and, and build a deeper relationship. So I would say that if you look at the three segments in the commodity trading space, agriculture, right, metals and minerals, as well as energy, all right, uh, the corporate partners would come one-third, one-third, one-third. That means we have one-third of our corporate partners focusing on agriculture, maybe one-third on, on, on metals and minerals, and the other third in the, in the energy space. And they, they do have... Uh, we do have right uh, very big names as well as smaller companies. Uh, of course, working for big names and working for smaller companies have uh, their various advantages as well, right? So depending on you know what is your intention in terms of trying to learn from all these things. Okay, so um, I I won't go through this particular slide. So uh, I would say about two years ago. We actually expanded right, this specialization to try to get students also from our chemistry department. So as you know, beyond the College of Engineering, uh, beyond N uh, Nanyang Business School, we also have various colleges in, in, in NTU. And, and of course, the sciences have a department in chemistry. And of course, the feedback from the industry is you know, they do need students coming from the industry and, and, and from, for chemistry uh, to join the industry, rather. And you think that chemistry maybe is just for energy is not true because uh, an, uh, uh, agriculture has a lot of chemistry involved, all right, how you produce, uh, how you refine some of these products to ultimately edible products, for example. All right, so, uh, so far we have uh, students, I would think, uh, not a big cohort, just 10 students, but it looks like there's a lot of uh, interest so uh, we will very likely expand that, uh, uh, you know, cohort from chemistry. And of course, over the next coming few years, we hope that um, we can also take students from other uh, uh, colleges in the, in the in NTU. Okay, so also about a couple of years ago, we decided that instead of just focusing on specialization, we want to also open up the international trading program so that students can take a minor in them, all right? And the difference between the major and the minor is actually quite, uh, I would say, almost non-existent because they're actually the same thing. It's just that uh, a, a specialization student probably have to also uh, fulfill, right, certain other courses uh, in business or engineering, whereas a person that's minoring in ITP, all right, essentially uh, is not constrained to take a certain group of courses within uh, uh, that specialization. So I would say that this, all the specialization students and minor students all have to finish exactly the same number of uh, courses related to ITP. And the courses are here, right, with courses in commodities trading, commodity market, law, trade finance, uh, you know, um, related to um, 
uh, shipping as well, logistic, that very important part. So I'm going to ask the question of Chen Yu right now. Uh, you know, you've gone through the program, obviously. Um, tell us a little bit about, you know, the experiences going through this, right? Your interaction with the instructors. Right. Yep. Uh, thank you, Prof. Lee. I think pretty much all these courses and all these modules that we have in the course is, is actually very much very curated to help you become more desk ready in the future, especially within the commodity space or uh, in, in the finance space. Right? So I think uh, in all these courses, we have instructors from the industries themselves and and those people and this, uh, this uh, professors actually give very real life uh, examples and they, were to, they, they are very relatable with the, what, what's happening in real life. And then I think that's, that's really important because what we learn in theory really is just theory, right? And then what translates down to the, the real life stuff is kind of very, very different. So the, the instructors there are, help, uh, are here to kind of bridge that gap uh, for, for us and then it helps to uh, give us a real flavor of what's going on in the real world. And then if you look across the different modules, it is very nicely created and segmented in a way where uh, we have focuses on different aspects and in different areas of the, the course itself and what's important within the commodity space. So uh, for example, like commodity trading, uh, it kind of focuses on the more uh, the trading fundamentals and how, we, how, how commodities are traded across the world. And then we talk about things like trade in quote terms and ship char chartering that is really focused on how the ships move around the world and how logistically uh, the commodities are structured in a way where it, it, it helps to uh, value add to how uh, commodities can be moved around the world, especially since all these commodities are moved around the world on ships mostly. All right, and I think, yeah, I think pretty much all these causes are really important to us uh, that helps to you know, become more desperate yeah. ultimately. Uh, thanks, Tenji. Yeah, so uh, we have designed this course uh, with the intention of training students so that they are more desk ready, uh, so that when they jump into the industry, all right, the learning curve is not extremely steep. I'm glad that, you know, uh, Tony is a testimony to that effort. Uh, and of course, what we do, right, within the center and, uh, and for the program is that we actually um, take a lot of feedback from the industry when it comes to how we can change this program so that they are constantly relevant to the industry. So uh, most of our corporate partners are, are inside our advisory board. So every year, uh, we actually meet with our corporate partners uh, formally in a advisory board meeting. And what we do is that we share uh, some of the latest development within the industry and see how we can kind of revamp the program so that they are constantly relevant. Obviously, uh, right now, one of the most important uh, aspects about uh, uh, the commodity trading industry, I would say two rather than one. Uh, one relates, of course, to the issues of, of sustainability, right? And another one, of course, relates to uh, technological disruption, all right? And as such, you know, how we can constantly build this into the program. Uh, recently, we have a conversation with one of our corporate partners, and uh, his comments was, in fact, one of the most important aspects of trying to understand the commodity industry is crisis management, right? Most of you know that right now the world is in a period of heightened uncertainty. There's a lot of flux going on and how as a commodity trading company, right, how do you manage some of this crisis? All right, so uh, um, probably um, in the next academic year, right, this program will be somewhat revamped to capture uh, how we can kind of bring that aspect of um, kind of commodity, managing the community, uh, commodity sector into the classroom. Right, so we are constantly revamping this. So as it is, this is what it stands, right? But uh, I think it's important that uh, we constantly get feedback from the industry and we've been doing so. So earlier I mentioned about bringing the industry into the classroom. All right, so uh, as you can see, um, you know, we do it in several ways, right? One of the things that we do it, of course, is internship. Another one is uh, um, what we call 
seminars, industry seminars, right, by our corporate partners, and, and not just our corporate partners, you know, people from the industry as well. So what we do is that, um, you know, the internship is not restricted to just within Singapore, all right? We have uh, been placing interns outside of Singapore as well, uh, included uh, sometimes, uh, I would say, scholarship sponsored by our corporate partners, all right, to bring our students for uh, internships overseas. So this could be, as you can see from here, it could go for uh, as far as Africa, all right, and, you know, China, uh, we have interns that have gone to Myanmar, Vietnam, Indonesia, all right, and, and these are sometimes uh, fully sponsored uh, internship where the students actually, uh, in, in addition to getting uh, the paid for the internship, also get stipend for their daily expenses, right? So uh, within this community, I think uh, the industry is trying very hard to uh, ensure that, you know, they have a steady pipeline of talents that will enable them to uh, tap on and grow the ecosystem. So I talk about, you know, bringing the industry into the classroom, and you can see we do a lot of things. And probably this evening you'll hear a lot about uh, how the International Trading Club was run by students. All right, they play a major, major, major role in ensuring that these programs and these kind of events take place on a regular basis. And I believe that the ITC also uh, hold training, all right, not just for you know people within the ITP, but anyone who is interested in uh, in the commodity sector, all right. Um, I, I I also mentioned about experiential uh, learning, and these are some of the experiential learning that uh, we have done. So, Chen uh, Yi, I heard unfortunately because of the pandemic, right, yep. you were not able to go. Yep. Uh, to some of this, uh, what right. do you think from your a lot uh, from your senior and you hear about some of these experiential learning? Anything to share with uh, our our audience here? Ooh, yep, uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> like like rightfully so. Um, I think it's really tough period for for I think my cohort and also like some of the uh, and also like the the batches around mine, uh, especially since with all things going on uh, in Singapore and around the world with the pandemic. It's tough to travel, but yeah, I, I mean, I think this whole idea of experiential learning trips are important. I think it's really something that is that CIT offers, and it helps students to get um, exposure across different countries. We talk about like Perth, China, Indonesia, and those areas and these countries are where the commodities are very uh, much operating within. Right, those those countries are heavy in the commodity space. And for us students to go over and see physically for ourselves how these things move around the world and how these things are refined in the refinery, it really gives us a good flavor around what are we actually studying, right? I mean, we are always seeing things from paper, from, from, you know, from a theory perspective, but we never really got a chance to kind of look at it in a physical, in a physical uh, means. And I think these trips uh, itself give us a good flavor around these things. And I think it's very, very much important to understand all these things because if you want to sell commodity A across from Singapore over to another country and you have never touched or even seen the commodity itself mm -hmm. and know how it's even refined in the first place, then it, it, is, it really gives us, uh, loses a little bit of touch to, to that, that sale itself. So. I think this, all these trips are very much essential and it helps students to get a, a good flavor of things going on in the world. Yeah. Uh, just to add on to what Chen Yu has said, I think uh, you know, most people think commodity trading uh, involves sitting in front of a screen and uh, kind of trading the prices and you know, uh, maybe doing uh, a speculative stuff. Uh, while some part of that is true, right? Uh, the truth is actually a lot wider than that. So within the community uh, or within the, uh, the co uh, community of commodity trading, all right, you will see that you know a lot of these type of trading involves physical deliveries, right? Where you know there is actual needs, all right, to receive right some of this product for you know all kinds of uh, end products, all right. So uh, as a result, uh, when you're trying to sell uh, for example, um, edible oil. Some of you are more com uh, perhaps 
are more familiar with, for example, you know, night brand or or this kind of, you know, how how are they made, right? What is the process? What is the process of, you know, getting from the fruits itself, which is palm oil, right, all the way down to something that's edible, all right? And and as a result of that, right, it makes trading in that in that space, right, a little bit more relatable, all right? And and therefore, when people talk to you about palm oil, right. Uh, you can see why people need palm oil, all right? And if you think about energy, right, all of us perhaps think of energy as something that fuels the air conditioning here, the lights and all these things, or even run our cars. But at the end of the day, right, energy has so many grades, right, so many different types of uses, right? It could be for aviation, it could be for, for, for automobiles, it could be you know, uh, to run the factory, whatever. So all different types of things, right, once they are made more relatable, right, it's a lot easier for us to, right, live within that space or operate within that space. So let me just share with you a little bit on what, what is on the screen. Uh, this is where we went to Indonesia, one of our corporate partners, who basically, um, you know, uh, runs the full value chain right of um uh, uh, palm oil all right so you know it goes from growing the trees themselves all right to re, uh, uh, to actually the milling process to the refinery process to ultimately the distribution channels all right so you know to to actually bring it to the supermarkets all right to uh, to have them so right how do they record the sales etc cetera, etc cetera. So what we did was basically we went there, right? Uh, we lived right within the plantation, right? So that gives you a sense of how that, that whole plantation is being operated. And, and it was quite an eye opener because you realize that it is actually a huge community, right? Within the plantation, there are, you know, nurseries for the, the plants, all right? Um, you know, and the various stages, right, for, for the, uh, uh, for the ultimate uh, harvesting of the of the of the palm oil, and right, surprisingly, there are schools inside the plantation for the children of the workers. There is a hospital, and there are recreational facilities. So it's a it's a big community. So I think the the experience was was very meaningful. All right, and this one, the next one is uh, where the students actually went to, uh, again, our corporate partners, but this one is mining alumina, right? So they finally refined, uh, uh, you know, the balsack into aluminum, all right, which then they, um, you know, ship out, right, from Australia, all right? And, and of course, uh, understanding the whole uh, value chain is very important, and one of the surprising things that, at least for me when I went there, was actually the mine was very clean. Right, you always have this impression that the mine is full of dust and, and you know everything is dirty and whatnot. No, it was actually very clean because it's very important to keep the mine clean and safe. All right, so uh, there's very special efforts to uh, to do so. So I think those experiences were very important to our students. And of course, when we were in all these places, it wasn't just meeting or, or just visiting these places. We also arranged for students to learn from various companies. All right, that operate various types of businesses uh, in the commodity space. So we will uh, get talks about gold mining, for example, in Perth. Obviously, uh, they also have a big gold mining uh, industry there. And, and of course, that just enhances the entire experiential learning trip for them. Okay, so uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, we were not able to go in the last couple of years, but uh, we hope that as VTL starts to uh, expand, right, we hopefully can arrange more uh, of these trips. So we do twice uh, every year uh, during the school breaks. And uh, just for your information, all right, as students of the uh, International Trading Program, uh, we, they, they, we actually highly subsidize this trip right, at a minimum of 50%, right, so that, you know, the students all get, uh, or as many students can get that kind of experience. So the next thing I'm going to move to is actually on the employment prospects, all right, uh, once you've graduated. So these are, all this information are, uh, are for ITP students, okay. 
so I would say uh, from the survey that we have got, all right, 91, roughly about 91% of our students will find a job within uh, uh, the first six months, right, or, or upon graduation. So that's a fairly good uh, statistics. And if you look at some of the companies that have actually employ our students, of course, this is not the entire uh, uh, group of companies that employ our students, um, just some examples of that. You can say that they actually span quite a, a bit of uh, uh, breadth, right, in terms of where these industries come from. We do have, um, you know, banks, right? We even have uh, private equity companies, insurance companies. And so you can see that the ITP program actually creates a high level of versatility as well as options for our students. Of course, a lot of things starts with internships. So I'm going to ask uh, Chen Yu again, right? Uh, obviously, you went through some internships. Uh, uh, share with us, you know, how those internships were like and how you have kind of, through those internships, right, benefited from, uh, from them. Right, right, right. Um, I think... I think in, internships are in, in essential uh, for for all students in in, um, in NTU itself, and uh, I think specifically in ITP. I think before I even touch on the, the internship aspect that I experienced, uh, I think it's always important to understand that CIT supports uh, the program a lot, and we have like Prof Lee said, we have like four four three uh, corporate partners and counting, and these people are the ones who actually helps to uh, give you that opportunities out there and it we uh, and they are there to kind of support your 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 pathway and your journey across uh, during uh, NTU uh, in NTU and and that helps to, to kind of give you opportunities that you may not have even encountered elsewhere even in other job portals and external job portals so I think that that's good to highlight and I think uh, personally uh, myself I think the internship experiences uh, have given me a lot of real experiences as to what is really going on in the world, um, and I think, and I think um, it's also a good uh, experience for me to find out what I actually want to do and what I re I am really not interested in. Because I mean, in reality, we at this point in time we would not know what we want to do, and internships are, are like perfect opportunities for us to go through and for us to even uh, have have this kind of exploration uh, phase for us to understand what we like and what we don't. Uh, unfortunately, maybe we don't have like that many opportunities out there because maybe we have like three or only four years across to kind of do internships. But it's really up to the, the students to kind of like uh, go out of the way to kind of do part-time internships and even do full-time internships uh, during their schooling phase just so that they can get the opportunities and get the experiences out there uh, as interns. And I think personally in doing those interns, right, it also helps to give you uh, an opportunity for you to get employed at the end of the day, right? Because uh, I think for most parts, uh, not all students will go through the, the whole finding a job phase uh, at the end of their uh, university uh, life, right? Some of your peers would, may have gotten their, their, their roles within like three years or maybe even like halfway through their, their NTU life. And that, that's essential, right? Because uh, some companies are only looking out for their full-time employees through their internship programs, yes, yes. and it, and that's important, right? If because that is the only opportunity that you have to get into the company itself. So, if you want to look, if you already have a view at what what you want to do in life and what you want to do um, you know, across for your career, and you know that early, great, you know, kind of sign up for the internships, and then those things can help you lead through to the full-time roles um, very much easily, and that process itself is more streamlined. Great, thanks, uh, Junyu. Uh, I'd like to add a few things on the internship program. So, uh, the internship in in for ITP students, in a way, is um, you know much more uh, supported than let's say generally, right? For a lot of students, and that of course is because the center actually have sufficient resources to help students, all right, uh, find good internships. So beyond just you know the students, uh, sorry, beyond just the, the the corporate partners actually offering the internship, the more important thing of course is try to match, all right, the right interns uh, with the right company, and for that right we actually have a dedicated staff uh, within our career services center to actually uh, deal with ITP students, 
All right, so as ITP students, right, you actually get, um, you know, very direct access, very uh, focused and concentrated access to this. And we have developed, uh, as what uh, Chen Yu said, portals that are essentially just focusing on that, right? So a student coming into the program can what we call claim, right, uh, the app, and then use that app to actually place uh, his or her CV and then the app will try to match the job as well as find mentors for that person. All right, and that is, of course, more dedicated for ITP students as well. Um, I think, of course, uh, within the internship uh, industry, uh, in the internship space, I would say, uh, the university is also uh, kind of uh, evolving. So right now, right, in addition to saying that, oh, all NTU students must do an internship, and that's true, all NTU students must do an internship before they can graduate. In addition to that, we're trying to grow what we call work-study program, all right? So a student will go out there and do an, a very extensive internship for 35 weeks, all right? That's about nine months. And within those nine months, right, the students actually also go through a kind of study process. That's why it's called a work-study program. All right, and of course that just increases the chance, right, that that student will get hired ultimately by the company because the company has spent more time get to know the student, and if the student is someone that they're looking for, all right, uh, they get a, a higher chance of, of being hired. So we're also kind of working on this work intern, a work study program which will be launched by the time you guys come in, all right, uh, the option will already be available for you. All right, so it's, it's constantly evolving, it's constantly improving, okay? So uh, I move on to look at, you know, the various industries. As you can see, right, it, it's quite, uh, uh, you know, uh, extensive. We have students going to healthcare even, right? Students going into finance and insurance, of course, make out the bulk of it, all right? And you can see the kind of jobs that they're doing, you have trade brokers there, we have financial analysts, uh, we have market research analysts, and as such, I think uh, uh, the, um, the program is, is actually tailored such that, you know, students, you know, can easily find a job. So I'm going to just leave a last word for Chen Yu to yeah. see if there's any words of encouragement for, <laughs> for our students or our prospect students. Right. Um, I, think, I think what's important here is, like, I think CIT provides that, uh, distinction between yourself and um, the rest of the business students I think specifically in banking and finance not to say that you know if you are majoring in banking finance as a major itself is, is wrong I have nothing wrong with that but it's just that if you are truly passionate and if you are really looking out to explore into different areas around the, uh, the, the financial space because the commodity space is not just about the commodities and physically the physical commodities it's really about combining both finance, financial stuff and also the commodity stuff, which I find is a really good hybrid for people who like uh, the idea of finance itself. So if you are someone who likes um, a little bit, uh, something a little bit different from the conventional finance stuff, I think CIT is a good place for you to explore because you know, it gets, you, you kind of get the, the best of both worlds, right? And you kind of get flavor of the physical stuff and you get a favor of what's going on uh, on on the scheme the paper markets and also the financial markets so i think uh if that's if that's what you're looking for then i think it's definitely something that you should go for yeah thank you jenny thank you for taking the time uh, to share your experiences with us and uh, we're very happy that uh, our alumni continue to come and and contribute uh, we do have a very uh, active alumni uh, community. So we continue to hope that a uh, person like Chen Yu can continue to come and support us and give back to, uh, uh, you know, the school and, and for the larger community. Thank you very much, Chen Yu. Thank you, Prof. Yu. So um, the next thing that we're going to do is talk about this evening's uh, program. So um, we are going to have um, Brenner. Brenner, of course, is again one of our um, students, a current student, all right? And she has, of course, also uh, with the International Trading Club, ITC, and she's with the uh, 
uh, liaison with the corporate partners, so she would have a lot of uh, uh, touch points with the corporate partners. So I'm glad that she's uh, here to share that uh, kind of experience and some of the activities, right, uh, that will be held uh, with uh, by the International Trading Club. So I'm going to pass uh, the floor to Brenna. Brenna, again, thank you very much for helping out and and sharing your uh, experience with our students. So Brenna. Hi, everyone. Thank you. Well, uh, I'm Brenna. I'm currently a year two business student specializing in banking and finance international trading program. So I'm also currently a member uh, of International Trading Club in the corporate liaison department. So uh, what we do here is uh, for us corporate liaison, we tend to deal with a lot of co uh, corporate partners. So we help, uh, we hold like networking sessions with them where students can come uh, to the session and ask about, uh, you know, what's the company like, the culture, uh, how's the trading industry, you know, and learn more about the internship opportunities or full-time graduate opportunities. So there's always a lot of these networking sessions that we hold uh, that will really benefit uh, the ITC members as well as the ITP student community in general. And actually, there are also other departments in the International Trading Club if you're interested. Maybe uh, you're more interested in the education or learning more about the technical knowledge in the international trading industry. So we also have the education department where you know, we will have a weekly write-ups on the current affairs, on uh, what's happening in the world, how does it affect the commodity prices, the supply and demand. So if you're more interested in you know, getting to know about the technical knowledge of it, then you can also join us in the education department. And we also have projects and also the marketing department where we have, uh, pl we have planned events. Uh, for this academic year, I think we had the ITP day, uh, yes. uh, which is uh, around December last year. So in this ITP day event, we have uh, seniors and alumni as well coming down to share about uh, how, how has their experience been in ITP and uh, what, what they're currently doing in their uh, full-time graduate job as well. And seniors are sharing about their internship experience. We also had three industri uh, industry speakers, if I'm not wrong, they're from Trafigura, South 32 and Wilmar. So at that time, we had fireside chats with them and we, uh, students get to ask questions like, uh, how, how has it been so far working in the trading industry? You know, what's the culture like? Uh, what is the important uh, soft skill or technical skills that you need to, uh, to do well in the, uh, in the commodities industry? So we have a lot of events coming up as well. Uh, and we have international trading case competition coming up in August, as well as the recruitment drive for International Trading Club, which will also be held around the same time, August, uh, September. So really look forward to see all of you there. Thank you. Thank you, Brenna. So as you can see, the ITC is a very, very active uh, club. Uh, of course, uh, as the director of CIT, we're very grateful that uh, students actually take the time uh, to spend, uh, you know, with fellow students and create the, the bigger community. And uh, of course, uh, from our end, we provide a lot of support, right? This could be technical support, financial support, uh, uh, for example, uh, um, you know, prices for the competition, et cetera, et cetera, uh, to really drive and enhance, right, the learning experience and uh, the social experience as well uh, that our students have uh, when they're going through this. Of course, uh, when the pandemic is kind of subsided, we hope that a lot of all these events can be done physically. All right, which means that we actually have um, a much better touch points. We're already doing some of those, uh, but hopefully, you know, we'll go back to where we uh, uh, kind of left off back in uh, 2019, where you know we have evening events uh, where we invite our our corporate partners to talk on hot button topics, any topic. Uh, I'm sure if it's not the pandemic, we would have topics that talk about, you know, what uh, energy prices and inflation. Uh, mean, right, given the kind of conflict that we're seeing between Russia and Ukraine right now, right, and that just kind of bring uh, the, 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 the world, right, what's really happening around the world, all right, much more uh, apparent and much more life uh, to, to some of our students. So again, this evening, right, uh, Brenna and her fellow students in the ITC uh, will be hosting uh, again, right, uh, info sessions 
on how you can play a more active role, all right, and, and contribute to uh, the community. So you see on the screen there, there is the QR code, all right, so scan and register, and uh, we hope to see all of you uh, this evening again, all right? So again, thank you very much for spending the time with us. Uh, we really appreciate that uh, once you either join NTU or are considering right, specializing uh, uh, or your specialization that you will consider uh, ITP. All right, so have a good day and I hope to see all of you again. Choose MBS because it empowers you to be your best because it helps to discover a better you for the future that you dream of. Basically, to find ourselves and to learn how you can make an impact in this world. Come to NBS to experience a different you. See you at NBS. See you at NBS. See you at NBS. See you at NBS. I look forward to seeing you at NBS.